Hello everyone, my name is Perseta Garbova and I'm a lecturer at the University of Tirana Faculty of Economics, Department of Finance. On this webinar, I will present a short overview of the contribution of insurance and catastrophic bonds on disaster risk management. The first part of the lecture will offer a summary of the products offered for disaster risk management in the insurance market and will focus on the challenges of insurability in cases of disasters. Later, the following section will deal more in detail with capital market instruments such as CAD bonds. There is almost no part of the world which has not experienced natural disasters of any kind. In the past decade, the Western Balkans has seen a significant growth in the number of natural disasters. In the third week of May 2014, a massive low-pressure cyclone swept through southern Eastern Europe, resulting in extensive flood damage in Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Serbia. Similar flood disasters have occurred in Albania. In 2015, over a three-day period from 31st of January to the 2nd of February, around 350 mm of rain fell in southern eastern Albania. The economic cost of damage to the agricultural sector alone was 31.5 million euros. On the 3rd August of 2015, a severe storm and intense rainfall in the Polak region affected more than 85,000 people and caused 30 million euro in damages. Risk financing instruments against disaster risk can be categorized into risk transfer and risk spreading instruments. Post-disaster government assistance can be seen as one of the most important arrangements of non-market risk transfer. These sources can be categorized as ex-post and ex-ante financing instruments. Ex-post instruments are sources that do not require advanced planning and focus on response after event. The main instruments are budget reallocation, domestic and external credit, tax increase, donor assistance. As ex post international assistance in some occasions can result inadequate since often is offered in kind, which has several disadvantages. Ex ante risk financing instruments require proactive advance planning. At the household level, risk spreading over time can be achieved in the form of savings. On the country level, governments can establish catastrophe reserve funds, usually financed by taxes, which are depleted only in the case of a disaster event. Contingent credit arrangements allow borrowing money after an event whereas the post-event annuity payments are smaller in comparison to regular credit. Risk transfer instruments are of major importance and much emphasized in academic literature, financial strategies and international institutions' recommendation as a mean of risk management that should be considered. In addition to traditional insurance and reinsurance, there is emerging interest in other alternative risk transfer instruments. Catastrophic bonds emerged as instruments primarily for reinsurance. However, there are also governmental efforts in some countries to transfer the risk with these instruments. The example of Mexico. Insurance is a contract represented by a policy in which an individual or entity receives financial protection or reimbursement against losses from an insurance company. A question raised in literature is whether all types of catastrophic risk are insurable. The disaster risk is characterized by almost all the aspects of an insured risk. It is considered as a random event with relatively low probability and 
a large number of similar exposures. In the case of catastrophic insurance products, there are no separate policies. They are included in the insurance policies against natural events or fire. In many countries, home insurance is not a mandatory insurance. Home coverage is provided in case of catastrophic events such as earthquakes, floods, cyclones, etc. To recover a loss, it is usually used the method of replacement costs. The home insurance is partial and it is considered a co-insurance, which implies that a part of the loss is covered by the insurance company and the rest by the owner. Automobile insurance. Typically, comprehensive auto insurance includes partial coverage for catastrophic events such as floods, hurricanes, etc. In this case, it is typical to apply deductible discounts. Life insurance. Typically, life insurance policy also provide coverage for cases of loss of life as a result of catastrophic events. The application of catastrophic coverage in the case of group life insurance may pose additional cost to the insurer if the insured are all located in the same area of the disaster. Health insurance and employees insurance. This type of insurance covers the risk of health damage from disaster and it provides coverage for medical expenses, diagnosis, hospital service, medication, etc. It also covers the payments to the insured in the event that income is interrupted by his or her disability. Liability insurance. Liability insurance can also include coverage of elements from catastrophic events. It is mainly applied for building liability and rented buildings as well as other elements. Some of the cases covered by the policies of liability insurance are damages caused by lack of protective measures or negligence related to technical regulations. Business interruption insurance, also known as business income insurance, is a type of insurance that covers the loss of income that a business suffers after a disaster. It differs from property insurance in that a property insurance policy only covers the physical damage to the business, while the additional coverage fixed by the business interruption policy covers the profits that would have been earned. Commercial and industrial property insurance is used to cover any commercial property. This insurance essentially provides the same kind of protection as a property insurance for consumers. When determining how much a company should pay for commercial property insurance, the value of business assets, including the building, is the primary factor. Agriculture is one of the sectors that experiences numerous natural catastrophic disasters. Agricultural insurance has great potential to provide value to low-income farmers and their communities, both by protecting farmers when shocks occur and by encouraging greater investment in crops. Three are the main contributions of insurance in economic growth and development. Insurance enables economies and individuals to be more enterprising and supports risk mitigation through ex-ante risk management. Second, ex-post insurance allows households, businesses and economies to recover more quickly in the aftermath of an insured event. And third, insurance plays an important role in channeling savings into investments. SAVIT 2017 evaluates the literature about hazard insurance availability and purchase and the challenges of insurability in case of disasters. A total of 70 articles were included in his study. A summarized version of the main challenges is presented in the following section. How insurance companies can calculate and diversify risk.
it seems easy to calculate risk in case of disasters as the probability of loss can be multiplied by the amount of loss upon occurrence. However, it is difficult to calculate risk in an area or property considering the infrequency of historical disaster losses. On the other hand, insurance companies refuse to provide risk insurance in the areas where disasters have been more frequent which implies the certainty of their repeated future occurrence. The climate changes are affecting the calculation of probability of the disasters which makes it difficult to consider historical data as a source of disaster estimation. Another factor which makes it more difficult to diversify and ensure the risk from disasters is that climate risks are also geographically correlated. One of the fundamental problems related to the calculation of disaster risk is covariance risk. For example, the risk that my car experiences an accident is not correlated with the accident that your car will suffer. This condition is less likely to be met in case of disasters, which tend to affect a large number of properties at once. The risk that my home and that of the neighbor will be affected by the earthquake is perfectly and positively correlated. How can insurance companies provide coverage? The ability to provide coverage for disasters is as difficult as the ability to estimate risk. Insurance companies and the insurance can hardly guarantee the availability of sufficient money in reserve to cover the damage after large disaster is experienced. Inability of an insurance company to accumulate financial reserves ends up in the reduction of financial capacity of the entire insurance industry. Trying to accumulate reserves by charging higher rates, insurers may have to face other problems related to insurability. To cover large damages of serious disasters, it is necessary that the insurance industry provides funds to the insurance company as the latter have inadequate financial reserves to cover damages. If insurance companies are able to encourage mitigation, the expected losses get reduced and the reputation of the company improves. But if the opposite happens, that is, if the insurance company fails to encourage mitigation and prevent losses, then it is more difficult for insurance companies to continue providing insurance for hazard risks. How do insurance companies obtain profitability? Insurance premiums constitute primarily the insurance revenues for disaster risk. Transaction costs as one of the type of costs arise from lack of effectiveness in the insurance market. Insurance companies find it difficult to adjust rates because of climate change and increase of population in areas of disaster risk which result in lower profits and decreased insurability. What challenges do insurance companies face negotiating with consumers? The customers happen to be more optimistic about their damages caused by disasters than the insurance companies. And, as a result, they may not agree on the prices the insurers want to charge them. Another difficulty faced by the insurance companies is that of enforcing long-term insurance contracts. Nowadays, due to, due to the increase of disaster risks and climate, the consumers do not rate their disaster risk accurately, and so they do not repurchase insurance, especially when they have not experienced any disasters during their contract period. Negotiation of contracts by the insurance companies with the consumers are also affected by the perceived role of government in disaster and risk management. Government assistance in case of disasters may result in separating bad risk from good risk. So only those customers representing bad risk want to purchase insurance. And in this case, the insurance companies are not willing to provide insurance to those who need it. 
Apart from that, the government assistance might result in charity for disasters, because people believe that they will be helped by the government in case of disaster, and they do not have to purchase insurance. Why do consumers hesitate to purchase insurance? There have been identified the following factors related to the decision to purchase insurance. The first factor is economic consideration. When price for insurance or income change, this does not result in considerable change of demand for insurance. The second factor is related to psychological characteristics. There is evidence on the rationality of the customers. However, they have proven also to be irrational, as they do not understand what is the appropriate amount of insurance they should purchase. Risk preferences and perceptions. The issue to, of to what extent people are able to estimate their disaster risk is questionable. A consumer's interest to purchase insurance increases due to his or her belief that the disaster is expected to affect him or her as an individual. Demographic characteristic is another factor. The disaster insurance purchase is likely to increase in the case of higher social classes. In some cases of being females or older ages, the level of insurance purchase is lower. There are numerous var variables that affect the consumer's decision to buy or not to buy the disaster insurance, and these variables contribute in understanding this attitude of the customers to insurance purchase. The following sections will deal more in detail with approaches of catastrophic bonds, the main actors in a catastrophic bond transaction, and why to invest in a catastrophic bonds and some arguments against catastrophic bonds. The most popular capital market products associated with catastrophic risks are catastrophic bonds, briefly known as CAD bonds. CAD bonds are an example of insurance securization to create risk-linked securities which transfer a specific set of risks from an issuer or sponsor to investors. In this way, investors take on the risks of a catastrophe or event occurring in return for attractive rates of investment. If catastrophe occurs, the investors will lose the principal they invested and the issuer, which is mainly or often an insurance or reinsurance companies, will receive that money to cover their losses. The typical catastrophe bond structures sees a special purpose vehicle or insurer enter into a reinsurance agreement with a sponsor or a counterparty, receiving premiums from the sponsor in exchange for providing the coverage via the issued securities. The special purpose vehicle issues the securities to investors and receives principal amount in return. The principal is then deposited into a collateral account, where they are typically invested in highly rated money market funds. The investor coupon or interest payments are made up of interest. The special purpose vehicle makes from the collateral and the premiums the sponsor pays. If a qualifying event occurs, which meets the trigger conditions to activate a payout, the special purpose vehicle will liquidate collateral required to make the payment and reimburse the counterparty according to the terms of the catastrophic bond transaction. If no trigger event occurs, then the collateral is liquidated at the end of the CAD bonds term and investors are repaid. Why to invest in catastrophic bonds? One of the reasons why the investors are interested in CAD bonds is that CAD bonds are almost not correlated with the credit risk, interest rate risk and equity market fluctuations. Generally, there is no correlation between the happenings of natural disasters and stock market and interest rate movement. The second reason why the investors are interested in CAD bonds is that the interest rate offered is much higher than the default risk. 
Investing in catastrophe bonds is that the likelihood of incurring extreme losses is far lower than the chance of benefiting from extreme returns. Critiques of catastrophe bonds. Referring to cat bonds as a source of systemic risk in the financial system is the fact that this kind of business operates in offshore areas where there are less strict regulations on capital requirements and disclosure of financial information. As a result, the investors find it difficult to monitor their risk exposure and they are concerned about lack of transparency. Investors in CAD bonds often do not consider the risk before investing, as they do not have enough knowledge on climate change risk and are tempted by higher returns. Another disadvantage for the investors in CAD bonds is that large sums of investments in these products may be lost unexpectedly as by underpricing the risk of climate disasters. The investors expect that they are getting higher returns constantly. As a result of this loss, the market will experience a crisis or even collapse. Another concern is related to the catastrophic modeling and pricing of CAD bonds. The complexity of catastrophic models needs the contribution of geologists, structural engineers, actuaries, and meteorologists. To create the model and the result, the final outcome may be unreliable and ineffective. It is argued that the least likely to be insured through these systems are the most vulnerable. The poorest regions are the most exposed to the risk of climate disasters, and they have to pay the most for financial protection, because of climate insurance tools. Therefore, it is the innocent parties co-finance the expenses of environmental risks imposed on them by the rich countries. And to conclude this webinar, it is important to emphasize that disaster risk finance is a challenging issue, especially in developing countries. Risk transfer instruments as a mean of risk management should be considered also and implemented in developing countries. In addition to traditional insurance and reinsurance, there is emerging interest also in other alternative risk transfer instruments, such as catastrophic bonds. In 2006, Fonden issued a 160 million US dollars catastrophe bonds called CATMAX to transfer Mexico earthquake risk to the international capital market. It was the first country that issued a multi peril multi region CAT bonds using the World Bank's multi CAT program. Thank you for your attention. For any further question, Related to this webinar presentation, do not hesitate to contact me.